Good evening. Welcome to the Columbus Bible Church live stream question and answer session. We appreciate everyone who's decided to tune in. We also appreciate those folks that decide to listen afterwards. Let me open us in a word of prayer and we will get started. Father God, thank you for this time. Thank you for your word. We pray, Lord, that as we dig into it, we would have understanding. We pray, Lord, that as we study your word, we would find peace and, and comfort and joy and assurance and help the body of Christ to be encouraged during the times in which we live. We pray these things in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Our question is, why does the Holy Spirit make groanings that can't be uttered? Why does the Holy Spirit make groanings that can't be uttered? Obviously, that question pertains to Romans 8, 26. So get Romans 8, verse 26, and we will start there. Romans 8, verse 26. Likewise, the Spirit also helpeth our infirmities. For we know not what we should pray for as we ought, but the Spirit itself maketh intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. And the traditional way that that verse is understood is what the Holy Spirit does is it makes intercession for us. And how does the Holy Spirit do that? Well, the Holy Spirit makes groanings which cannot be uttered. So the Holy Spirit is performing groanings is the way that this verse is traditionally understood. Spoiler, we, we think it is actually saying something else. So let's dig in and try to understand what this verse is telling us. So let's start at the beginning. Likewise, likewise the Spirit also helpeth our infirmities. Now, as always, we want to pay attention to the context. So let's go up to Romans 8.16 just for a minute. Romans 8.16. The Spirit itself beareth witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God, and joint heirs with Christ, if so be that we suffer with him, that we may be also glorified together. Now, what verse 16 and 17 is telling us is the Holy Spirit does something. And what it does is it bears witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. So the Holy Spirit testifies that we are the children of God. I say that because think about how Romans 8.26 starts. Likewise, the Spirit also. What I believe to be the case, what I understand to be the case, is when in verse 26, it says, likewise, likewise the Spirit also, it's referring back to verse 16. In other words, verse 16 says, the Spirit bears witness that we're the children of God. And in verse 26, we're going to learn something else that the Spirit does. Likewise, the Spirit also. Well, what does the Spirit also do? It says here, it helpeth our infirmities. Well, what are what is our infirmities? What is that a reference to? Well, let's understand what the infirmities are. So let's read Romans 8, 26, and let's start at the beginning. We're going to read a little further. Likewise, the Spirit also helpeth our infirmities, colon, for we know not what we should pray for as we ought. I would suggest to you that the for connects what follows from what was before. In other words, we're told exactly what the infirmities are. The infirmities are that we know not what we should pray for as we ought. Now let's understand that for a minute. That's not saying that we don't know how to pray because the world is too complicated, because God's will is unknown, what God wants to accomplish is unclear, so we don't know how to pray. That's not what it's saying. What it says is 
For we know not what we should pray for as we ought. In other words, we don't know what we should pray for, but we ought to. We should. We ought to know what we should pray for. The idea there is our infirmity is a lack of understanding. There's some things that we don't know that we should know. And if we knew those things, we would be better able to pray. What this is getting to, I believe, is as believers, we have inadequate knowledge of the Word of God. We have inadequate understanding of what God is doing today. And that lack of understanding, does that affect our prayer life? Yes, it does. Does that lack of understanding affect our spiritual life, affect our walk? Well, it does. Because if we have an, an absence of knowledge, an absence of understanding of what God's Word would have us to do, in other words, if we don't know what He wants us to do, well, then we're often going to do things that are inconsistent with what He would want us to do. So now then, let's look at the next phrase. So let's put this together. Likewise, the Spirit also helpeth our infirmities, for we know not what we should pray for as we ought. We don't know what we should be praying about. But the Spirit itself maketh intercession for us. So praise the Lord. The Spirit intercedes on our behalf. Now what this says here is, the Spirit itself make, maketh intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. Now, this tees up the real issue that we want to get to. Most times, people read the word with to mean through or by way of. In other words, the Spirit makes intercession through groanings. The Spirit makes intercession by way of groanings. In other words, the Spirit makes intercession for us in that the Spirit groans. In other words, when it says, the Spirit itself maketh intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered, people read that as telling you how the Spirit makes intercession. The Spirit makes intercession by doing what? By making groanings which cannot be uttered. But pause for a minute. Does that make sense? Is there any verse anywhere else in Scripture that talks about the Spirit groaning? Why would the Spirit groan? Is the Spirit at a loss for words? Is the Spirit have trouble putting his thoughts into words? In other words, is he speechless? Does he lack the ability to say what he wants to say? The interpretation that the Spirit itself is making groanings which cannot be uttered, I don't think it makes a lot of sense. I don't think there's any other verse in Scripture that would cause you to think that the Spirit groans because it doesn't know what else to say. It doesn't make sense. Consider this. Maybe the word with means and. So I'm going to give you a simple example, and it's one of my favorite examples. Are you ready? I would like a hamburger with cheese. I'm not saying I want a hamburger by way of cheese or I want a hamburger through cheese. What I'm saying is I want a hamburger and cheese with it, cheese in addition. In other words, it's a separate, distinct thing. In Romans 8.26, the with means and. Moreover, the groanings which cannot be uttered is a reference not to what the Holy Spirit is doing, but to what the believer is doing. Now, how do I know that? Did I just make that up? Did I just say something for which there is no evidence? Well, how would you study this? If you wanted to prove this out, what would you do, folks? You know the answer, don't you? We're going to go to our old friend, the Blue Letter Bible. 
Now I want you to tell me, what word am I about to search? Now if some of you have the gift of prophecy, you will be able to predict what word I'm about to search. Now I'm kidding because, of course, that's, that's not true. But what word am I about to search? And you know what the answer is going to be, right? The word is going to be groan. And I'll put the wild card so that it captures groan, groaned, groanings, etc. So let's, let's run our search. And uh, we could go through this line by line, but what I'm going to do to cut to the chase, there's only 20 verses, so it wouldn't take that long, but let's just skip down and see if there's anything in Paul that talks about this. Is the, is the suspense killing you? Is it just driving you crazy with anticipation? Let's go down here for a minute and look at this. Now we know, of course, Romans 8.26, we expected that, but look at this. In the very context of Romans 8, it talks about other groanings. Well, maybe we should read those verses and see what it's talking about. So let's go to Romans 8.22 and start there. Romans chapter 8, verse 22. For we know that the whole creation groaneth and travaileth in pain together until now. So the whole creation groans. Verse 23. And not only they but ourselves also. Well, when Paul talks about ourselves, he's including himself in that, isn't he? So notice verse 23, and not only they, but ourselves also, which have the first fruits of the Spirit. So he's talking about the body of Christ, isn't he? Those that have the first fruits of the Spirit. Even we ourselves groan, notice what it says, within ourselves. Do we groan out loud? Do we groan audibly? No. Where do we groan? Within ourselves. Well, if you groan within yourself, then it's not something that you are uttering. Obviously, if you utter something, you speak it. it it's words that are external that go out into the world. But if it's entirely internal, if you groan within yourselves, then it is not uttered. Why do we groan within ourselves? Well, let's keep reading. Waiting for the adoption to wit the redemption of our body. Here's what verse 23 is saying. And not only they, not only the rest of creation, but ourselves also, the body of Christ, which have the first fruits of the Spirit, even we ourselves, we groan where? Internally, within ourselves. Why? because we are waiting for the adoption to wit the redemption of our body. Here's what I think this verse is saying. Do you ever groan? Do you ever have frustration that you're not yet in your new body? Does this current body cause you trouble? Does it ache? Does it age? Does it decay? Does it get sick? I mean, here's, here's the reality. We all know this. If you have a physical body on this earth, you have what 1 Corinthians describes as a corruptible body. The longer you have it, the worse it is going to get. It's going to age and decay and just basically fall apart. Does that become more and more the case over time? Yes. And what Romans 8.23 is describing is that we groan within ourselves. We have this internal frustration because what are we waiting for? What are we longing for? The redemption of our body. Let me put it this way. When you were saved, you were, healed by, you were sealed by the Holy Spirit. So the Holy Spirit is not the problem. When you were saved, you were justified. You were declared righteous. Your soul has been saved from hell. But what is the basic problem that a believer has? The basic problem that a believer has is even though your soul has been delivered from hell, even though you're indwelt by the Holy Spirit, even though you have been declared righteous and have peace with God, you walk around and exist in a body that is corruptible and sinful and falling apart. So it's a constant frustration. 
That's why we wait for, we look forward to the adoption, to wit, the redemption of our body. So what are the groanings in Romans 8? Now think about this. Isn't this amazing to me? In Romans 8, 26, people think that the Holy Spirit does the groaning. If you just go up four verses, it tells you what the groanings are. They have nothing, nothing to do with the Holy Spirit the person that is groaning in Romans 8.23, the persons, the people, are the body of Christ. And they are groaning, it specifically says, within ourselves, which are groanings that cannot be uttered. Doesn't Romans 8.23 establish beyond doubt that in Romans 8.26, what the Holy Spirit does is it maketh intercession for us with groanings that cannot be uttered. We have already know what the groanings are that cannot be uttered. Verse 23 told us. They're the internal groanings that the believer makes. Let's go back to our list of verses here. So we looked at Romans 8.22, we looked at Romans 8.23, and obviously those verses are critical in understanding what's going on in Romans 8.26. Well, we've got another passage to look at, 2 Corinthians 5, verses 2 and 4. So turn with me to 2 Corinthians chapter 5. We'll start in verse 1. 2 Corinthians chapter 5. Verse 1, For we know that if our earthly house of this tabernacle were dissolved, we have a building of God, and house not made with hands eternal in the heavens. Well, 2 Corinthians 5 verse 1 is talking about our new bodies, right? It's, it, it's a building of God and house not made with hands eternal in the heavens. It's the same subject as Romans 8 verses 22 and 23. Now notice verse 2. For in this we groan. Why? Earnestly desiring to be clothed upon which are with our with our house, which is from heaven. The reason we groan is we earnestly desire that new body. Don't you desire it? I do. I'd love to have my new body. Verse 3. If so be that being clothed, we shall not be found naked. Verse 4, for we that are in this tabernacle do groan, being burdened, not for that we be, would be unclothed, but clothed upon, that mortality might be swallowed up of life. Now I want you to think about this just for a minute. In all of Paul, there's five references to, that use the word groan. So when you think about the word groanings, in Romans 8.26, and the conventional understanding as well, the Spirit is doing the groanings. In the very context, when you read Romans 8.22 and Romans 8.23, it tells you that the groaning within ourselves is by the believer. So the context is those groanings are by the believer. If you go to 2 Corinthians 5, which is the other place where the word groan appears, who's doing the groaning? Is it the Holy Spirit? For in this we groan. It is the believer doing the groaning. Verse 4, for we that are in this tabernacle, that's the body of Christ, do groan, being burdened. It's clear as can be. When Romans 8.26 talks about the Holy Spirit maketh intercession for us, it's not the Holy Spirit is groaning, groaning, groaning in a way that can't be heard. That doesn't really make any sense. The Holy Spirit Listen, God the Father invented language, right? He's the creator of language. Is the Holy Spirit completely articulate and able to say exactly what the Holy Spirit wants? Yes, absolutely. So what the Holy Spirit does is it intercedes on our behalf. Why? For we know not what we should pray for as we ought. God looks down on us and says, these folks that are saved, they should pray. I've commanded them to pray. I've told them how to pray in the scriptures, but they haven't learned enough to know how they should pray. For we know not how to pray as we ought. I wish they would pay more attention, read my word better, understand how I would like them to pray, and their life spiritually would be so much better for it. But here's what I'm going to do. Since they haven't figured it out yet, the Holy Spirit that indwells them, the Holy Spirit will make intercession on their behalf. 
and the Holy Spirit, which has perfect knowledge of the Father's will, will pray properly. And so what the Holy Spirit does is the Holy Spirit makes intercession for us. Meanwhile, what we're doing is we're down here groaning. We have these groanings which cannot be uttered because we're waiting for the adoption to wit the redemption of our body. So back to our original question. The original question was, why does the Holy Spirit make groanings that can't be uttered? And the answer is the Holy Spirit doesn't make groanings that can't be uttered. It is the body of Christ. It is individual believers that make groanings that can't be uttered because we are waiting for the adoption. We are earnestly desiring to be clothed upon with our house which is from heaven. So what does that mean for us? The first thing is we understand the Holy Spirit is not doing the groanings, it's us. The second thing we understand from that is we need to be in God's Word because we need to learn better how to pray as we ought. We need to be studying it. But praise the Lord, what God has done for us, because we lack perfect understanding, is the Holy Spirit himself maketh intercession on our behalf. Now I want to show you one other thing then in Romans 8. Well, look in, in Romans 8, and what we've seen so far is the Holy Spirit makes intercession on our behalf. Look at verse 27, Romans 8, 27. And he that searcheth the hearts knoweth what is the mind of the Spirit. And I'm going to give you this as, as homework. Figure out who searcheth the hearts. I'm going to suggest to you that it is Jesus Christ. And he that searcheth the hearts knoweth what is the mind of the Spirit, because he maketh intercession for the saints according to the will of God. Isn't that fascinating? So in verse 26, the Holy Spirit makes intercession for us before God the Father. In verse 27, who else makes intercession for us before God the Father? The Lord Jesus Christ. Now, if you want a, a little bit of proof of that, look at verse 34. Romans 8, verse 34. Who is he that condemneth? It is Christ that died, yea, rather, that is risen again, who is even at the right hand of God, who also maketh intercession for us. So beyond doubt, Romans 8, 34 says that Jesus Christ, who died for us, makes intercession for us. So think about that just for a minute. You are so blessed in the body of Christ that even though you don't know how to pray for as you ought, as we ought, we've been blessed because you know what happens? The Holy Spirit intercedes with God the Father on our behalf. Jesus Christ intercedes with God the Father on our behalf. And God the Father himself loves us. What a blessed position to be in. God the Father loves you, and the two other members of the Trinity, the Holy Spirit and the Lord Jesus Christ, are interceding on your behalf with God the Father. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. What a blessing to be in the body of Christ. Thank you for tuning in. Let me close us in a word of prayer. Father God, thank you for your word. Thank you for its perfection. Thank you that you have told us what we need to know to lead spiritually productive lives. We thank you for the encouragement of your word. And it's in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ that we pray. Amen. <music>